The eyes of America were fixed on the television screen as President Richard Nixon took to the podium, his solemn expression revealing the weight of the moment. The nation hung on his every word as he carefully delivered his speech, each pause pregnant with significance. Meanwhile, on the other side of the globe, a massive military orchestra was being unfurled from the carrier USS Coral Sea. Several A-6 intruders took to the skies toward their target, Haiphong's port, a crucial naval asset for North Vietnam. The warplanes soon pierced the North Vietnamese secure airspace and swooped in to deliver a barrage of 1,000-pound Mark 52 magnetic mines that would effectively blockade the enemy's naval ports and cripple their ability to receive supplies from China and the Soviet Union. One minute after the intruders had released their payloads, the Coral Sea delivered an instant transmission to the White House, confirming the success of the initial blockade. At that moment, Nixon began speaking normally, and he surprised the nation by saying, quote, I have ordered the following measures, which are being implemented as I am speaking to you. All entrances to North Vietnamese ports will be mined to prevent access to these ports and North Vietnamese naval operations from these ports. The bold move was a defiant challenge to the might of China and the Soviet Union, risking their wrath during a de-escalation. But this was only the beginning, the first round in a campaign that would come to be known as Operation Pocket Money. Bitter Negotiations Diplomatic talks to end the conflict in Vietnam began in Paris, France, on May 10, 1968. However, they turned out to be highly contentious, with both sides accusing the other of bad faith and making unrealistic demands. However, by the end of 1968, the two sides had agreed on a framework for peace negotiations, which included a ceasefire and the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Vietnam. Despite this progress, the peace talks stalled for several years, with both sides continuing to fight in Vietnam. The U.S. and North Vietnam remained opposed to one another on several key issues, including the future political structure of Vietnam and the role of the Viet Cong in any future government. The reluctant negotiators met again in January 1972 to resume the peace talks, with similar results. Both sides refused to budge on crucial points regarding the future of Vietnam. The negotiations then continued sluggishly, and the U.S. grew increasingly frustrated. To make matters worse, the U.S. military wasn't performing so well in certain regions. The initial troop withdrawal in 1969 had given the enemy a considerable advantage, which they were eagerly exploiting. The Quang Tri province, particularly, was collapsing rapidly before the North Vietnamese Easter Offensive. As the North Vietnamese's success on the battlefield made them reluctant to negotiate, the U.S. needed a way to pressure them back to the table. Thus, after avoiding it for over a decade for fear of escalating the conflict with Russia and China, the U.S. military decided to mine and blockade North Vietnam's waters. In May 1972, Operation Pocket Money was launched as the U.S. sought a way out of the Vietnam War. On set. On May 8, 1972, the United States unleashed an operation that would change the course of the Vietnam War. The mission was timed to coincide with President Richard Nixon's televised speech at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. USS Coral Sea was tasked with leading the operation's opening phase. The audacious operation involved three A-6 intruders carrying four 1,000-pound Mark 52 magnetic mines and six Navy A-7 Corsair II carrying four 500-pound Mark 36 acoustic mines. The aircraft would drop the mines in Haiphong's inner and outer channels, disrupting North Vietnamese naval operations and blocking enemy supply routes. The Mark 52 mines were massive, measuring 80 inches in length and 19 inches in diameter, and they were intended to be fitted with an aerodynamic nose cap during transport. However, USS Coral Sea only had six nose caps, meaning that each A-6 would have to suffer the drag penalty of two uncapped mines. At the targeted port, 37 foreign flag ships moored, including 16 Soviet, 5 Chinese, 
five Somalian, four British, three Polish, two Cuban, and one East German. To avoid harming neutral ships, the mines were set with a time fuse delay of 72 hours, allowing the ships to leave the port safely. To protect the mine-laying aircraft, guided missile cruisers USS Long Beach and USS Chicago moved north to within 40 miles of Haiphong. The cruisers were given a free fire zone for RIM-8 Talos missiles to engage any defending MiG fighters approaching from the Phuc Yen and Kep airfields near Hanoi. The initial action of Operation Pocket Money was a success, but the day was not without tragedy. As Rear Admiral Rembrandt C. Robinson and his staff were returning from a planning meeting aboard USS Coral Sea on May 8th, the Sikorsky SH-3 Sea King transporting them lost power while approaching the flagship USS Providence at 10.45 p.m., causing the helicopter to land on the edge of the carrier's flight deck and roll overboard. The Admiral, his chief of staff, and his operations officer all perished. Onslaught. In the early hours of May 9th, the mine-laying actions continued, and a Lockheed EC-121 Warning Star took off from Da Nang Air Base to support the massive efforts of the day. Meanwhile, USS Kitty Hawk deployed 17 warplanes for a diversionary strike against the Nam Din Railroad siding. The attack was planned to distract the enemy and focus their efforts on a different region. However, lousy weather restricted the original diversion plan, forcing the bombers to hit secondary targets of Tan and Phu Ki. In sync with the other actions of the day, a sizable destroyer force commanded by Captain Robert Pace bombarded the Haiphong Harbor air defense batteries for 30 minutes before the aerial mining began. The intruders, escorted by A-7E Corsairs and a single EKA-3B Sky Warrior for electronic countermeasures support, left the Coral Sea at 8.40 a.m. to join the operation. The enemy had been startled by their sudden brutality and the destruction of their air defense emplacements, and as the American aircraft approached to drop their mines, they deployed two MiG interceptors. However, the Americans were prepared, and Chicago launched two Talos missiles at the MiGs, destroying one of them. At 8.59 a.m., the Coral Sea bombers began releasing mines. Shortly after, the pilots radioed their carriers to confirm that the mines were in the water. The message was passed to the White House, where President Nixon was delivering a speech. Upon hearing the news, Nixon immediately disclosed to the public the wide range of measures to disrupt North Vietnamese naval operations, including mining all entrances to their ports, interrupting the delivery of supplies, cutting off rail and communication lines, and continuing air and naval strikes. Over the following days, additional mining missions targeted the ports of Tan Hoa, Phek Loi, Kang Khe, and Dong Khoi. By the year's end, Navy and Marine Corps bombers had dropped over 8,000 mines in North Vietnamese coastal waters and 3,000 in inland waterways. Solar Storms and Minefields The far-reaching operation was not flawless, and on August 4, 1972, dozens of the mines suddenly malfunctioned and detonated spontaneously. The U.S. Navy determined that magnetic radiation from a geomagnetic storm triggered by a coronal mass ejection on the sun caused the explosions, a finding that was confirmed by scientific research in 2018. One British and four Soviet vessels managed to leave the port of Haiphong during a brief window of opportunity in which the mines posed no threat. The rest of the ships in the harbor were virtually immobilized for 300 days as the port of Haiphong was closed. The mining operation also prevented routine dredging, causing the harbor depth to decrease by two feet. Even so, the mission had been a decisive success, with the naval communications of most of North Vietnam being wholly shattered in one fell swoop. Moreover, American negotiators used the mining to their advantage, offering to remove some of the mines in exchange for releasing prisoners of war. Months later, Operation End Sweep successfully removed the mines between February 6th and July 27th, 1973, but at a cost. USS Warrington was severely damaged when she triggered what was believed to be mislaid mines 20 miles north of Dong Hoi on July 17th.
Aftershock. Operation Pocket Money was a tactical success, but the effect it had on the peace negotiations between the U.S. and North Vietnam was not what the Americans intended. Initially, the mines served as a bargaining chip that allowed U.S. officials to pressure the enemy to release some POWs. However, the operation eventually led to another breakdown in negotiations, as the North Vietnamese government refused to participate in further talks until the mining was stopped. This resulted in a delay of several months in the peace negotiations, which did not resume until late 1972. The mining operation also increased tensions between the United States and North Vietnam and contributed to a further escalation of the conflict. Ultimately, however, the operation successfully achieved its objectives. It disrupted North Vietnamese supply lines and showed Vietnam the U.S. still had ways to protect its interests in the region. Thank you for watching Dark Seas. Don't miss out on more thrilling sea adventures by hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications. And if you're eager to unravel more captivating wartime stories, tap your screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels where we publish new content regularly. Stay tuned.